Hello YouTube world, students, colleagues. Once again, this is Dr. Satish Singhal, PhD, Professor of Computer Science at El Camino College, Torrance, California. <clears throat> and this time I'm going to show you my second video on abstract classes in C++, video two of three. Uh, I recommend that before watching this video, you watch my two more videos, first one, on dynamic binding explained second one after class in C++ video one of three and in video one of three we discussed the basic concept of abstract classes and importantly enough we showed this inheritance diagram that there is a door class which has only pure virtual functions all doors have behaviors like they open and they close and door has two functions open and close those are both pure virtual function those are written like this <coughs> virtual function return type name parameter list could be zero equals zero that's how pure virtual functions are written since all these classes are derived from door these classes should either give full body to these functions or they'll become abstract themselves. Characteristic of abstract classes is that they cannot be instantiated. So I'm going to show you this whole inheritance <coughs> uh, implementation in Xcode. So let's go to Xcode. So here I have a door class as I mentioned before door class and it has two pure virtual functions which have no body that means door cannot be instantiated <clears throat> and it still needs a constructor okay even though door will not be instantiated because this has to be called when child classes are instantiated okay so to prove that door cannot be instantiated I'll go to my main function and I can just do something like this door D <coughs> and immediately I get this error message that variable type door is an abstract class and meaning that it cannot be instantiated. So we can do anything with that, okay? So that proves that abstract classes cannot be instantiated. Now there are lots of classes here, but I'm really only gonna focus on two derived classes. So this is my inheritance diagram. So there's a car door class that drives from door class. So that's the inheritance syntax, class, car door, colon, public, door. As soon as this derivation is done, that means car door class has inherited these two pure virtual functions. And this cannot be instantiated until, car door cannot be instantiated until it gives full body to both of them. So first we write a car door class constructor and this class constructor has to be called through the initialization list we do that here none of the constructors need any body because i don't have any data member here third video will show you some example of data members and all those things so here i do give it a body i have the body for open function void open and it doesn't do anything earth shattering it just says see out look out into the traffic before opening the door that's how you're gonna do when you're in the car and gives the body to the close function and it just has the output statement close the door before starting the car now <clears throat> car door itself can be instantiated but we want to focus on a more important characteristic of inheritance that a base class pointer can hold the address of the child class 
and that is shown right here door is my base class a pointer of door type can hold the address of child class car door create at the runtime and then I can call through this pointer the open and close functions which are pure virtual in the door class but they got overridden right here we override the open function this pure virtual function here and we override the close function right here so it should really give us these two lines of output if we run it and let's run it <clears throat> and let's see the output okay why did that happen stop sometime okay there it goes there it is so this is the output from open function remember I had d1 arrow open so got the output from that look out into traffic before opening the door and d1 dot close was the close function close the car door before starting the car close the door car door before starting the car so the behavior open and close functions open and close that were in the base class got enforced onto child class and only then we can instantiate the child class notice algorithm inside the origin function is up to the driving class okay I can write look out into traffic before opening the door or I can write anything else. So there's no restriction on algorithm being executed, but this behavior should be there. And if I comment out even a single function here, you'll see I'll get a compiler error. Uh, <clears throat> comment that out. As soon as I do that, this constructor call here becomes a compiler allocating an object of abstract class car door they said so you can't instantiate this class okay so i can just code that in and i'll be fine see now i can do that and that's what I've done with this class called French door. Notice it has, it derives from the door, but it does not override these two pure virtual functions. Now I can do anything with it. If I try to make a constructor call like this one, so even though it, it has a constructor, can you see that? It has a constructor, but it says French door is an abstract class because it did not override the two pure virtual functions. Okay, that's one advantage of abstract classes. Okay, so I don't want this code here. Okay, so another property that is there for after base classes that I can declare an array of abstract base class type and it fill that with the objects of child classes so I could do <clears throat> this one that and this one I'm adding new code if it works fine otherwise I may have to abandon this project so door DRS and just make it five. <clears throat> okay, area of abstract class cannot be done. Okay, sorry about that. So I have to abandon that project. Yeah. 
array of abstract class. I think it can be done in Java, but not in C++. So we're going to not do that. So this is it. Abstract classes have pure virtual function, one or more. When they derive, when class is derived from abstract class, the child class has to give full body to pure virtual functions. Otherwise, they will become abstract themselves. We demoed that. And then, of course, just like regular virtual functions, they provide dynamic binding. They make correct object to function call binding at the runtime. <clears throat> so it's a very good design flexibility. Writing abstract classes, driving classes from that is a very good design tool. Uh, in Java, those are called interfaces. And there's a little joke that goes around uh, inventor of Java, James Gosling, somebody was interviewing him and they asked him that if you were to rewrite Java, what would you do differently? And he said, I will eliminate classes and only leave interfaces. His purpose was saying that I'll only leave abstract classes, nothing else. In fact, if C++ did that, I would be pretty happy. <laughs> I really don't see that much advantage of having uh, classes. You can just do abstract classes. All right. <clears throat> so once again, this is Dr. Single. Thank you for watching. And this is my video two of series of three videos on abstract classes. And <clears throat> so, so no little windows. So let's see. There has to be something here to stop this video. Yeah, stop it right here.